Today on Uncommonly Good MTG, we're looking at the top five win weight decks for the last week that in within April of 2024, April 8th to April 15th. Will your favorite decks make the list? Stay tuned to find out more. Hello and welcome to Uncommonly Good MTG. I am your host, as always, burdened with glorious purpose, Dr. Yukon Sucket. Yes, thank you. Film before a live studio audience. Thank you so much. Yukon Sucket. Word to your mama. So I'm broadcasting to you today from my secret underground headquarters, and it's top five win rate dex day. Top five win rate dex day. Top five win rate dex day. Yeah. So this is the part in the middle of the month where I take a break and we take a look to see in the current meta this last week what are the top five decks as reported by Untapped.gg. Untapped.gg, your location for interesting deck information. Yeah, so they're paying attention to people playing games. It all kind of adds up. There are stats involved and math and crap like that. And lo and behold, they're telling us these are the decks that are rocking it right now. The thing is, though, you know what's coming out tomorrow? A new set, which means everything is thrown out the window. But still, these decks are still going to be awesome tomorrow. The place we got to worry about is August. Because August is the rotation and lots of stuff are going to go away. And all these decks that are rocking it right now are just going to die overnight. But uh, tomorrow, they'll still be good. They'll still be good. Just, we got new cards to play with tomorrow. All right, so um, what do we got this month? Well, I got to tell you that uh, one, one deck has dropped. That's Selesnya Enchantments. Suck it, Selesnya Enchantments. I hate Kamiya Transients. You can go rotten hell forever. Um, and another deck has come out of nowhere to, to make it onto the list. Uh, two decks have remained in their current position while two other decks have moved around all skitter beam like all right so that's that's all the clues that i can give you and so before we start taking a look at the number five place deck this month let's say our prayers and talk about what is best in life all right hands together dear black king toxrel who dwells within the dark chambers of my heart please hear my prayers and grant your blessings as we attempt to crush our enemies See them driven for us, and to hear the lamentations of the women. And here you go, number five. And we're playing against Arctic Wolf 24. We got three whites, ones, twos. All right, we're good. A little stinky fox. Let's shoot your goo all over the place. Alright, since so we're going second against Mono Red Aggro, I don't know what we'll be able to hold up here. If he doesn't come at me, it means he doesn't have anything. If he tries to bluff. That's an interesting situation. Let's just say no. And he's just going to go for the shot anyway. Alright, we got another one. We got to get up to four to make this guy really work for us. We'll plan on doing the Copper Coat Vanguard on our next turn. Yeah, whatever, man. It's blocked. Are you, you going to pump? Single. There you go, pretty fox. Good job for you. Here, let's go get you some pie. Oh, it's a monster instead.
All right, number three. Let's get us into a Copper Coat Vanguard. We can keep the Copper Coat Vanguard. I might just go ahead and convoke out. They're not keeping crap, are we? These guys got to run out of stuff soon. That's all I can say. Yeah, pump it up. There we go. I mean, I could have put out the other one, in which case we're doing even better, but I just, you know, I just hate passing up an opportunity for intrepid adversary. Life! All right, let's, uh, let's do it again. Uh, auto pay. All right, you got single mana. Looks like you're shooting. Oh, yeah, okay, you're going to do that. Let's kill off the cockroach. The cockroach, we got the opportunity. Thalia. Copper Coat Vanguard. Yeah, man, that's fine. Going in. Get some of that sweet, sweet life for us. And we win. Suck it. Mono bread. In your face. All right, so here we are with fifth place this month. Mono white humans. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. I remember, like, mono white humans was the deck for so long. So very, very, very long. To see it number five on the list, that is like a dream come true for me. Uh, still, it's decked it incredibly well. Incredibly. Incredibly well. Um, what is the deal here? I mean, really, this Convoke guy, you know, this guy has really just taken over the deck. Uh, you know, we have Boros Convoke sitting around someplace on the list, more than likely. He's the Convoke we're seeing from it, I would bet. Usually, he's just in there because you can pick him up for so cheap. He's got some other great value to him. Plus, he's got a 4-4. The one that really helped us in this particular game was, of course, was Intrepid Adversary. I don't think I really needed to pump it like I did, but... Uh, it was still incredible because one thing that mono red can't hold up against is life gain. And that is your life gain, boy. But we did have things like ossification, uh, brutal cathar. Those things are in there for creature control. I'm surprised, you know, Skrelv is not a human, but Skrelv does a great job of just getting out there and keeping people alive. Yeah, this deck is just loaded up with everything that's great in white at this moment. The fact we can go full on tribal with it and calling in humans is great. Because uh, that's what Copper Coat Vanguard does. Come out and lords up the place like he owns the place, right? All right. You you shouldn't be surprised by Mono White Humans. You should just be surprised that it's only number five on the list. And let's check out to see what's on number four. All right. We're playing against Vertic Verticit. Verticit. Keep. All right, fewer lands. Let's go for this guy. That's totally cool. Let's just throw him out. All right, we're going to have to rage in with our little friend here. Giant growth, auto pay. And uh, we, can, we can go do what we need to do here. All right, you're going to block it. No, huh? All right, fine. We'll just go ahead and pick the Gruner this thing. One. Two. That's down to three. Now we just need a nice fling, which this deck doesn't have, I don't believe, but. Got prowess and haste. Mm, trample. All right, we're good to go. Let's just go to town then. Trample. Auto pay. Oh, don't tell me that's the only thing we got. We'll go with this guy too, just because we can. Come on, haste. Oh, I should have put him out. I didn't think I was going to play him, though, is the problem. All right, 
So we can get him down to two, but he's got to sacrifice all those guys. Winner, winner! Victory dinner! I right, actually, so we are with uh, John de Agro. I always pronounce Jund wrong. I was called Jund. Um, Jund de Ag Jund de Agro. Yeah, I, you know, it's funny. I've never seen this deck before today. So the fact that this is racing up to number four right now this week with number of wins is fantastic and a fantastic surprise. I didn't even know how to play this thing. And in fact, I still maybe didn't play it right. I'm not sure. Uh, the big thing there is it looks like it's making use of Pyrotechnic Performer to get it so that you flip people over. You're doing that damage to each opponent. And the fact that you can flip over Hunted Bone Brute for so cheap is fantastic. Fantastic. Um, I found that the Picnic Runer with uh, being able, what does he do? He does double strike, and then you throw on the giant growths, which gives him, well, I guess that wasn't it, was it Audacity? Yeah, Audacity gives him the trample. Yeah, that was so good. Man, tremendous amount. Double strikey, super pump, and trample. That is really hard to hold up to. So between the super pump aggro creatures and the ability to use the disguises for flipping over to pretty much doing like direct damage. Of uh, super pumped guys, such as the Hunted Bone Brute, or Bone Brute right there. Yeah, yeah, this deck was a wonderful surprise in the making. Glad to see it's number four. Do I expect it's going to stick around to next month? I don't know. Probably not. It's just one of those uh, flash in the pan decks, possibly. I'll be eating my words when it's number one next month, but I, it just seems like it's a really cool thing to see. I just don't think it's going to hold up well in the long run. All right, so there we go, John. John Dagro, let's see who's number three now. All right, playing against Mazarik. All right, two mana. Well, this is rough. All right, we'll keep it. We can use these two guys right there. Touch the rock. Alright, we're going to have to go against life gain somehow. How to pay! Play the bud twice. Slap it down, go on in. Alright, I could have put out the Knight Errant. I could have done that. I was just... Already all wrapped up. Let's get out this guy because his super pump chews up to two, huh? All right, cool. We'll keep it. All right, the question, can we go to town on the next turn? What do we got? He just wants to do more life gain. All right, so what do we got? We got... 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and tons. All right, let's go. There you go. Have a good time. All right, down to seven, and now they're all weak again. Depends how much can he actually gain in this next turn. Life link's not great. Back up to nine. All right, three mana, huh? Let's just, let's see, these guys don't do anything on their own. Let's just go in. That's fine. They'll gain 
a little bit. Let's just spread the wealth. All right, good. Give up the bat. Draw some more guys. Even more dudes. Excellent. And who are we popping in here? Up to two, huh? That'll help. That'll help immediately, I suppose. Yeah, let's try that. All right, how many guys we got? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Block three, we could pop in two more with the Boulder and Epicures. All right, uh, let's see. Let's take out one guy. We got tons. We can take out the 8-8, eight eight, right? Do we? Yeah, we can. Eight, there we go. Let's leave this for a little second there. Let's go with what we got. He's going to gain three life. None of these guys matter. Let's just pump this guy up. All right, lose it. Wow. Wow. All right, back up to five. I'm going to throw out the Epicure. Now, let's just leave it a little low. Those, those guys are tricks. All right, they're all pumped. And we win. Ooh, that guy was getting dicey there for a second. Victory. All right, so we are with number three this month, Boros Convoke. Boris forked last month, number three. This guy's just holding steady. Um, if you take a look at him, I mean, he looks, I'm going to say, he looks a lot like mono white humans. And that's not thats not the case. We've got Sanguine Evangelist into it. Uh, you know, there's not a lot of humans in here. I mean, just we got Resolute Reinforcements. There's no, uh, who am I trying to say, that little um, Skrelv or anything like that. The big thing to me is you've got the Gleeful Demolition and you got Eomain's Recruiter. That's those two guys are really the guys that make Boros really spring for this one. I and mean, it really works out well when we can take basically one small dude, dude and turn him into three small dudes. That is fantastic. This deck has that ability cheap. Um, we're not the thing we're gonna do with all of those guys is swarm in. We got the Gateway Express that helps you to pick people off. Big guys at that too, since we have such a large swarm going on. And of course, we can also convoke in on. Knight Errant of Yes. I mean, technically, Case of the Gateway Express is a Convoke spell as well because the amount of damage that you're doing is equal to the number of creatures you're involved. You just don't have to tap them or anything like that. But between this, between the Recruiter, and between the Knight, the aim of the Knight being able to Convoke him in, we're making use of all of the various swarming that we're capable of doing otherwise. You know, the one thing that this deck is missing is War Leader's Call. Uh, it would do very well with that, but you have to find something to give up. Probably, I don't know, Sanguine Evangelist or something. Still, uh, it's a great deck without the World Leader's Call. Holding together at number three, Boros Convoke. And now, for your perusal, number two. Now we're playing against Sharp James 1. One goes first again. Keep... 
All right, let's Kumano it up. I'll tell you, we'll throw out the hold on on the next turn. Ooh, Phoenix Chick, really? Let's do it. Nice, nice bit of evasion on there. Means that we could probably continuously get it through. We just delayed our turns by one turn. All right, I'm gonna squee this puppy up. Squee! He's not blocking. I just don't see it. Really? Is that what you're really going to do? He's down to eight. Next turn, we can throw out either of these two and the Monstrous Rage. Hopefully, we can stitch this thing up. What would be bad right now would be an ossification. That's also life gain. is not great. Oh, look, he did them both. He did both of them. How fantastic. All right, let's just kill this guy. Let's go in. And let's rage up on uh, flying guy. Not enough. Oh, sweet God. Got him down to one. Uh, he came back two. We can easily do two. I don't care what you can seal, but Phoenix check at this point. All right, so that means I'm only able to get two additional damage in on top of what he's got. That's it. That's the total. He just took up six. He's at seven now. Look, we got that last mana. All in. No math! Yeah! In your face, Sharp James. Suck it! All right, here we are with number two this month, Mono Red Aggro. I'm so proud to see Mono Red Aggro at the top two. I think it always deserves to be top one. That's just a little bit of bias on my part. I just love Mono Red Aggro. Um, the only thing about Mono Red Aggro is it's kind of boring. I mean, we got Monastery Swift Sphere, Monstrous Rage, Kumano, Charming Sweet. I mean, just it's so dull. Thing is, tomorrow, new sets coming out. Hopefully, we'll see some new additions. We can swap some stuff out. The other thing I'm looking forward to is the rotation that's coming up in August. But what are we really going to lose there? We'll lose the, um, the Bloodthirsty Arsonist. We'll lose Kumano. Play with Fire. There's always other things like Play with Fire, though. That's, I'm not too worried about it. I think Play with Fire is all over the place. This, we'll just have to see. It's something other than Play with If we just, you know, it's just Scry. It's two points of damage. It's shock or whatever they are does the same thing. So it's not, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff that's coming here recently. We'll still continue to be able to play with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This deck's still going to hold out well. We'll just use a, a two or three of these cards here pretty soon. The more we can swap them out, the better it'll be. But this deck is always going to be rocking. The only way it can be better is if it was all goblin or something like that. Nice goblin tribal with this level of synergy. Oh, that would be so good. Still, this deck is so good. What is it so great about? Haste. Haste, 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 haste. That's what I love about this deck is that your creatures come out swinging. They can't expect what's going to happen. They just know that I'm putting dudes out. They just they have, they just have to guess that they're going to be able to defend against it. And we got plenty of cheap creature removal for cheap creatures. That's going to happen if this deck makes it to you make it to the fourth or fifth to fifth round, right? And you still haven't won the game. You should just give up because you're probably not going to win. This deck needs to finish people off by turn four, turn five, and if you don't. And if you don't make it by that point, you're probably not going to be able to do it. Still, this deck is fantastic. And if I were to try to rank, uh, I would probably take a, a copy of Mono Red Aggro to the top with me. That's what I would do. All right. So anyways, at your total top of the list there, Mono Red Aggro, congratulations. Only one deck's done better to you. Let's go check it out.
Empire playing against Devin Townsend. Devin Townsend. Ooh, there is a whole lot of, like, not stuff here. I'm just going to say, okay. I mean, these guys come out for humans, right? Human. And we're going first. That's good. Human. Let's go for the Copper Coat Vanguard. Kath. We'll go out with Adelin. Rage in with what we got. I don't like the fact this guy's playing uh, Gorlgar. It's the black that I'm worried about. He's going to start removing some stuff. Everybody's got some sort of ward on him, which is nice. Uh, oh, we could kill that blocker if we want to. How much do we need for it? Three? Let's just throw that out. Let's go with everybody we got. Go ahead and try to block something. I dare you. Block it. Death. Oh, and that's the end of it. <laughs> that was a quick game. Victory. All right, so we are with Boros Humans. Number one again this month from last month. So back in March. Boros Humans number one. April, Boros Humans number two, uh, number one again. Now, um, you know, I'm so used to seeing mono white humans at the top of the list. Guess what we got here? This looks exactly like mono white human. Oh, except for one red guy. One. So essentially, mono white humans sucks it because they decided, somebody decided that Edomain's, Emo Dane's recruiter is necessary to be to put into a mono white deck essentially that's it that's all we got secluded courtyard and cavern of souls and battlefield forge is so we can just play this guy to pump all your dudes up and give them haste and rip them out there that's it man that's the only difference as far as i can tell as a matter of fact this deck looks almost exactly like boros convoke to me so between mono white humans boros convoke and boros humans I think we're playing the exact same decks and uh, I, I wouldn't even call them. I wouldn't even say that they're different. I'd say they're all part of the exact same deck situation. Now, okay, Boros Convoke, the version we played, had a lot of swarm to it, right? We're putting out like Resolute Reinforcements and then the Goblin one that puts out the three goblins and you got the Sanguine Evangelist, I think. But see, this one's got two out of the three in it. Just we didn't have red in there to do it as well. So whatevs, man. It's, this is practically another flavor of Boros Convoke. I mean, it's got this guy, it's got this guy. We're just missing out on that uh, the case that shoots everybody based upon the number of guys you got out. Whatevs. Anyways, it's it supposedly has the highest win rate this week, as according to Untapped GG, and uh, it's held steady for a month. So I don't doubt it. And I gotta say, the game I just played was so incredibly quick. And we didn't even get the recruiter out. It was just mono white doing what mono white does. And it would have been hard to, I mean, for mono red to hold up to that level of aggression. So good for you, Boros humans. You're not Boros, you're not mono white humans, at least. At least. So that's the best thing I can say about you. Congratulations on another month at the top. Will we see you there in May? We'll just have to find out. All right, so there we are with the list of the uh, top whatever bazillion decks, according to Untapped GG, with our top number five showing up right here, Boros Humans, Mono Red Aggro, Boros Convoke, June Aggro, and Mono White Humans. And in all reality, what do all these decks have in common? Aggro. This is the golden years of aggro right now. What else do these have in common? Boros Humans, Boros Convoke, and Mono White Humans. They're like 90% the same deck. The fact that uh, Mono Red Aggro and June Aggro are somehow shoehorned in between them, crazy. You know, crazy, right? Um, the other thing is, look how many decks, how many matches have been played against Mono Red Aggro. The more you play, the more this is going to kind of even out towards 50%. So that's amazing that Mono Red's still holding it together with 68,000 matches played in essentially one week. One week, baby, that's where we got going on there.
Anyways, I, I love that I have this only tuned down to a single week because I like seeing the, the, the list variate. I was doing it, I think, best in meta uh, since the last release or something like that for a long time. And stuff did not change at all. And as you know, in standard, the change is what makes the meta rate. All right, so there we go. Your top five for April 2024. If you decide to play with any of these decks, I hope that you have as much fun as I did. All right, that's all for now. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. From all of us here in the secret underground headquarters of Uncommonly Good MTG, have a great day. See you next time, Space Cowboys. Later.